Okay, so let's walk through my four tips for how to write better JavaScript. And these tips are probably the ones that I've found to be most useful in my daily job since I've been work I've been working with JavaScript professionally now for a few years and hopefully these tips will be useful to you as well. So first and foremost we're importing Lodash. Most of my projects in, in most of my projects I use Lodash. It's a very nice library. You should check it out. So the first tip I have for you is to check your input. So this function here takes an array and an element, it pushes the element onto the array and then it returns the same array. The issue here is that we're not checking if array actually is an array, we just assume that it is an array. That means that if anything else is being passed in here, this code is going to break, which isn't all that great. The second thing that is happening is that push is a mutating function, which means that the original array will now be changed. And that's not also that's that's not ideal either. Ideally we just want to create a new instance of this array, add an element to that new array and return that instance to keep our data immutable. So in this next example, I've made those a few improvements. So we're now checking if array actually is an array, and if it is, if it's not an array, we simply return the element as a si the only argument into you know as a part of a new array. And if it is an array, we concatenate an, an, the element into this array. So this was will create basically a new instance of this array with this element element added at the end which keeps our data, you know, we are, we're not mutating the original array, which keeps immutability in place for our data, which is, I think, pretty nice. And then let's talk about guarding. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue here is that we are passing in a user and then we are assuming that user is an object and that that object has an address object and that that has a, has a property called zip code. Basically, this function can, the, the two issues I see here is that we're not making sure that this is a safe index. This is actually one of the most common reasons why you have bugs in JavaScript where you assume a shape of an object and then something changes. This Maybe this object isn't an object anymore or it, for whatever reason the user isn't an object and then you get you know an undefined reference and the whole, the whole code, whole code breaks. The second thing that is more subtle is that zip code could be undefi undefined. So sometimes this function might return whatever zip code is and sometimes it's going to return undefined and now the caller has to deal with that. So something you can do that is slightly nicer than this is called guarding. And basically what we're doing here is that we are doing an AND to check if user is a truthy value and then we check does user.address is that a truthy value and then we check is user.address.zip code a truthy value and then we do the allocation basically this is going to be undefined if not all of this equ equals true and then we do just do a undefined check and if if we find an undefined value we return a empty string and otherwise we return you know the value that we found this is slightly nicer and it's going to you know save us a lot of bugs and so forth but my personal favorite is this one where you use lodash's get function and get is probably my most used function used function i absolutely love it so we take the user object and then through a string we say that hey check the, this object see if there's an address and a zip code on the address object and if you can't find that just return an empty string this these two functions are doing the exact same thing but the get function does it for you and get can actually do, do it with arrays and basically any value so get is a very nice way of checking a an object and you basically getting a safely getting a property from an object right that was tip number two use guarding so tip number three is to pass the least amount of stuff that you can to a function so in this function we have two users and we want to check if user2 is a follower of user1 so we do user .1, user1 .followers find, and then we go through and check all the IDs and see and we should look up basically we, we try to find user2 in that list of IDs and then we should return true if we find a follower and otherwise we return false so what's the issue here well first and foremost we're 
assuming that user 1 and user 2 are objects, which is, again, not that great. You, you, we should do some type checking at least or something like that. The second thing we're doing is that we don't really care about user 1 and user 2. What we want is to have an array of followers and we want something to compare, an ID to compare against. That's it. So why are we using, like, why are we passing these two objects? It's, this, it's completely unnecessary. So a nicer approach to this problem is to do something like this. So we pass an array of followers and some follower ID. And then we check, okay, is it an array? If it's not an array, then we return false because we can't iterate over, some, over something that's not an array. And then we do the iteration and the comparison like this. And basically this, these two now are doing the same thing, but this function knows less about, it doesn't require an, an entire object to be passed into it, which is better because there's less information that is passed to the function. So that's tip number three, pass the least amount of stuff. It, it's going to save you a lot of hassle in the future, trust me. And then my final tip is to pass an object for complex functions. Now this might be a little bit counterintuitive because I just told you to always pass the least amount of stuff, but there are certain functions that grow so complicated over time that you just get you get so many parameters that it gets really, really tedious for you to maintain these functions over time. So this is a, a toy example, but just bear with me. So is user match for advertisement? This is a classic example of a function that can be very, very complicated over time and have a lot of different parameters that is going to be part of determining if this, if this is going to be a true or a false value. So Basically, we have declared a user as input and a country, a region, city, street, age, and all these different things that we want to check against. And then we basically check the user for equality against all of these properties. And then we check is correct country, is correct region. You know, if it's a match all through and through, then we, re we return that the user is a match for this. Otherwise, it's going to be a false. So imagine now that this function is actually very important and it's used all across your project. It's, you know, you use it in many, many, many different places. And then your boss comes in and says, hey, you know, we're, we're dropping the whole street thing. We're just removing street from, from our function where we don't care about that anymore. Or even worse, maybe they're adding, they might be adding something in like some other property or, you know, you need to start adding more stuff in. So what happens then is that if you remove, which is the worst case, if you have to remove something from this function's uh, declaration, all of a sudden now, you need to go and refactor all the places where this function has been used because you changed the contract of the contract of the function. It has different parameters. And you can do that, or you could just ignore street inside of the code. You could just remove this code here and like you remove the the in the evaluation down here but that's not nice either because you know you're going to you're, you're not really solving the problem you're just sh like sweeping some garbage uh, code under the rug so what i suggest you do instead which solves this problem in a very nice way is that you pass an object and this should be a flat object you should not nest these things think of it as a as a map basically just key value properties so what happens now is that you have abstracted away the input, which is awesome because now all of a sudden in this declaration, it's very important that country comes before region and the region comes out before city and street. You know, the, the input sequence is very, very important. Here it doesn't matter. You can pass anything. You could. This is very extensible. You can add as many new proper parameters as you want. You can remove parameters all across your project, and the function will always behave the same. So this becomes a very flexible function very quickly. So basically, what we do now is we just make sure that you know the data is action and object, and then we try to get the user from. Here you see the get function again, and we just try to grab the user from from our data object here. And then we have the exact same flow. And what I think is very beautiful with this is that I can st like start adding stuff and I can remove stuff. 
I can remove this, I, I can do almost anything and it, I don't have to go to any part of my code and refactor this in, in essence because I can't break the function by changing, uh, because the interface stays the same, right? So those are my four tips for how to write slightly better JavaScript. I, yeah, I'll see if I can think of any others, but these four should get you started and hopefully they will be useful to you in your own projects.